Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about client cost advances or reimbursable expenses. Now these are expenses that are paid by the company on behalf of the customer or client and the client or customer is going to reimburse the company for that cost. In a law firm, some examples would be court filing fees, medical record fees, expert fees, deposition transcripts, and in other industries, it might be something like a software subscription that maybe they get a discount on. For example, in accounting, we might get an, a discount on software like QuickBooks or ADP or something like that, and we have to pay the cost up front and then, and then bill the customer to get reimbursed for that cost. There's a couple different ways you can treat this. You can treat it as an expense when paid, when the expense is paid, and then income when the company gets reimbursed. This is easy. It's easy to track along with your other expenses. You would just have some sort of reimbursable expense account, and anytime you paid an expense, you would put it in that account. It is combined with your other operating expenses to operate your business. So if you don't have a lot of these expenses, you might prefer to do it this way just because it's easy, no big deal. And then when you get reimbursed by your client, you would treat this as income. Some companies choose to treat this as an asset instead. In this method, you would have some sort of account, asset account like you might call it reimbursable expenses, although you probably wouldn't call it that if it was an asset account. You might call it something like client cost advanced or client cost advances. And you're going to increase and decrease this account as you pay expenses and as you get reimbursed. This removes it from the profit and loss statement altogether. And basically it separates it so that you're not combining it with your regular operating expenses. If you're not sure which one to use, you can ask whoever prepares your taxes what they would prefer and do it that way. I personally use the profit and loss method for my own business just because I really don't have that many of these expenses. What we're going to do in this video is walk through a few examples few different scenarios. I've got one scenario in Wave Accounting and I've got another scenario in QuickBooks Online. That way you can see a good variety and get a good get some good options. Okay in this first scenario I have this in Wave Accounting and I'm treating the reimbursable expense as an expense and in income on the profit and loss. So I have an income account, reimbursable expense income. These are payments from customers paid on behalf of customers. Payments from customers for expenses paid on behalf of them by the company. And then I also have an expense account called reimbursable expenses, expenses paid on behalf of the customer. And I went ahead and set up an item under products and services for reimbursable expenses, it is going to be connected to that income account because when it's on an invoice being billed to a customer, it is being treated as income. And then when I pay an expense, it is treated as an expense. So let me just walk you through the transactions. So here under the transactions, I have a filing fee paid by the credit card and I recorded it as an expense and I used the reimbursable expenses account and it was $50. And then I created an invoice where I billed the customer for sales or services of $500 plus the reimbursable expense of $50. 
And then I also created another invoice just so you can have more data. This was just a sales invoice. There were no expenses associated with this at all. So let's look at the reports to see what it looks like over here. So there's a separate line item for the reimbursable expense income that was from that invoice. And then I have separately the $1,500 in sales that were recorded on those invoices. Now you could put everything in one sales account. You don't necessarily have to have the separate line item of $50. I personally like to have a separate line item just so I can see money I've made from sales or services versus money that I'm just getting reimbursed. And then I have an operating expense called reimbursable expenses for the expense under the transactions. So that's for the credit card expense that the company paid. The net effect of $50 on the income side and $50 on the expense side is zero. So the only net profit they are reporting would be the sales income of $1,500. So just keep that in mind, however you treat this, the net effect should be zero as long as you are recording things properly in the right accounts and you are getting reimbursed for all the expenses you pay for on behalf of the client. It should not affect your bottom line either way. So I want you to keep that in mind in case you're not sure how to do this how to do this, sorry. Um, it is not, it should not affect your bottom line in the end. Now there may be a timing issue where you might pay an expense and not get reimbursed for a couple months. And that may interfere with, you pay the expense in 2022, but you don't get reimbursed till January, 2023. But in the end, in the long run, it should not affect your bottom line as long as you're getting reimbursed for all your expenses. So just do keep that in mind. Okay, now we're going to go over to QuickBooks. In QuickBooks, I have it set up as an asset under Client Cost Advances. And I set up an item under Products and Services for my Client Cost Advances. And in the Income Account, I just put that Asset Account instead of an actual Income Account so that whenever I get reimbursed from a customer, it's just gonna go back to this asset account instead of income. And then if I have an expense, I also need to make sure I record it in this client cost advances account, which I did put a couple of examples, or I did put an example expense here. In this expense, in this expense I put the category as client cost advances, and I did mark this as billable to the customer and the customer is Amy's Bird Sanctuary for $70. So this cost increased this account. It's on the increase side. And then that same day I billed the customer and put it on an invoice. But before I show you that, I actually want to make sure you know the setting to mark these as billable. So you would go to the gear icon, go to account and settings, go to expenses. And in this bills and expenses section, you should have these, all these features on to be able to bill customers for expenses. So I just wanted to point that out in case you didn't know. And then when I mark that as billable, what that does is it creates an item on the customer page so that when I'm creating an invoice for the customer, it's automatically going to show this as an item that needs to be billed to the customer. So let's go to that customer. As you can see here, I already created the invoice, but before I did, this billable expense charge was open. Once I put it on the invoice, it closed it out. So that's there, along with some design hours, services. So once I put it on this invoice, it subtracted it from the client cost advances account. So as long as you're billing all your expenses, that account should 
be zeroed out. You pay the expense, then you bill it to a customer. Now let's go back to this. So this customer has not paid for the invoice yet. Let's go ahead and look at how this looks on the reports. If I go to the profit and loss, it is actually not going to show up here. The design income would show up here, but not the expense. I would have to go to the balance sheet to see anything in client cost advances, which is right here in the asset section. Now, right now it shows zero. I can click on this to see detail. I have a plus $70 item when I charged the cost or paid the cost and then a subtraction of $70 when I billed the customer for that. Let's go back. Now notice I'm doing accrual accounting. If I change this to cash basis, it does show the $70. It does not show the $70 minus because the customer hasn't paid it yet. So it's not reflecting that under cash basis. So keep that in mind. If the customer hasn't paid it yet and you're doing cash basis, then this is gonna look a little bit different. So I hope this helps give you some options on how to treat these expenses. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I will try to answer them if I can. But again, this may be something you need to ask your tax preparer about. Thank you for watching.